Okay, so we're back here and I'm going to call this my final lighting setup. I'm pretty happy with the shadows here. They're not too distracting and you see such great results right here uh, with not a whole lot of effort. Okay, um, so we've got everything set up here. We're rendering out a beauty pass. Uh, you can actually render out multiple passes here, but uh, we're not going to do this for this particular scene. I do want to save this. There's a little camera button down here. You can click on that. It saves the snapshot. It's up here, so you go to File, and you want to say Save Image as Color Corrected. Okay, so that's going to send it out with a proper uh, gamma correction on there. And if you want to just uh, save your character out, we just call this lighting and version one. And that's saving it out into the images directory. Okay. And I'm going to save it as a uh, JPEG. Okay. All right. So there is some uh, kind of important information happening down here in the bottom of the render view. Uh, we've got our samples. If we open up our render settings here, that correlates to our samples happening right here. So we've got uh, you know eight camera samples and then two diffuse, glossy, uh, refraction. Uh, you know we could probably let's see if we can get rid of some of these things right here. And we're not really using them. I'm going to take that back down to two. Uh, I don't think we need that. We're not doing any volumetric work in here. We just need camera, diffuse. Um, now if I crank this up, this is going to bounce more light in here. Uh, it's going to look really beautiful. We'll get a lot of uh, this blue and purple spill down here on the ground, but we don't really need that for this scene here. Uh, it also increases render time pretty significantly. So I'm going to leave this down and that should buy us a little bit more time uh, for rendering and everything else here I think we're pretty much good to go. Okay so the last thing we need to do here is to set up the actual turntable animation. I'm going to go ahead and close that out. I'm going to save that and our character needs to do a 360. Okay so not everything in the scene is doing a 360. We've got our our background and our lights right here and our render cam. So all of that is outside of the character. I actually want to select the render cam and I think I'm going to just back out a tiny little bit. Maybe do that. And make sure I'm on frame one and I'm going to hit S on the keyboard. So that's just going to kind of lock my camera in place here if I bump it accidentally. And because I know I have that in place, uh, you know, if I do anything like this, I can always just come back here and it will snap back to place. Okay, so up here on the character group level, this is where we're going to do our animation. Our turntable is going to uh, affect everything inside this group. So on uh, frame one, we're going to just go ahead and set um, Actually, what I'm going to do is just kind of offset him a little bit. Uh, I don't like my character starting in a full-on front view to camera. So I can either move the camera and then adjust the background and leave him there. Um, I think I would rather just kind of leave everything because I've kind of got it in place. I don't want to move the lights and stuff around. So I'm going to go to my channel box. I'm selected on the group here. I'm going to hit E on the keyboard, and so that's our Y rotate right here. That's what we're going to be spinning around. And, you know, it's sort of your preference if you want it to go clockwise or counterclockwise. I, I think I do mine counterclockwise. I'm not sure why. Um, but I'm going to start him off kind of in this, this position right here. So not straight on. I'm just going to turn him right here. This is going to be my starting position, and I'm going to just come up here and say freeze transformations. So it's going to zero everything out, and I'm going to hit S on the keyboard. So that's going to be my first frame. I need to expand this out to 360 frames. Same thing here, 360. Go down to 360, and um, I think I'm 
I'm going to have him go clockwise. So I'm going to spin him around this way. And it's going to be a negative 360 in here. Oops. There we go. Negative 360. And I'm going to hit S on the keyboard. And I can play that now. So he's moving nice and slow. He's got to ease in. And coming around here and ease out. Okay. All right. So that looks good. Save my scene and just make one more check on here to make sure everything is set. Uh, so good thing we checked. Uh, I didn't set up the camera here, so we want the camera selected as our render cam. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Say okay. And typically I would run one more test frame just to make sure everything looked good on frame one. Uh, you can go ahead and do that if you want to check that out. Other than that, uh, we should be good to go. I am gonna come under rendering, render. And we're going to use a uh, render sequence. I'm going to open up the option box here. Uh, that's all we need to do. We just don't, I don't think we need to check anything like that. Okay. Maya's pretty much locked up at this point here, and you can't uh, do anything on it while it's rendering. So it is rendering those frames out. You can go out to your directory and go into the images directory, and you should see your first frame. So it's kind of busy working on this frame right here, okay? So make sure you check your render periodically that it's still still going and it hasn't crashed. Check your frames, make sure it's what you want. You don't want to come back with any surprises after it's rendering all night. If you are uh, rendering on the school computer, be sure to put a uh, tape on a, a piece of paper here and say rendering do not turn off. Uh, that lets everybody know that the, the computer is occupied. Okay, I'm just going to let this first one kind of finish out here and take a look at it. And I believe it has to finish out the frame. It's not going to stop in the middle of the frame. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to come under here uh, and check my render settings again and see what's going on. So uh, we don't need an alpha channel close that and let's see so it is rendering I'm gonna make sure I go to render cam over here I'm gonna stop it again that's just the escape key so not seeing render cam so this is sort of the problem of not using a batch render uh, if you don't have a uh, dedicated Arnold license. Uh, you can't use the batch render. You have to use this sequence render. Out that again and just it's on frame two over here. I'm gonna render the sequence again here and see what it does. Okay, so the render seemed to be working fine. Uh, again, it pretty much locks up Maya. You can't do anything else on the computer and uh, it looked like it had kind of a slow start. Um, I had to kill this frame here. I need to go back and correct it. And then frame two to frame three, this is when I restarted it. It took quite a while, so uh, you can see the timestamps there. So I think it was still loading information in there, but it seems to be kind of cruising along at about three minutes a frame, which is uh, it's pretty decent. Okay, so um, just time that out, and if you get a chance to break this up over multiple computers in a lab, if you want to take over even two or three computers, you can run chunks on there, like run frames 1 to 50 on one computer, and then uh, 51 to 101 or whatnot, uh, however you want to break that up. Um, that'll speed things up for sure.